Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. I bet you can't tell from this eclectic bunch of stuff in the back of our uh, wagon what we're going to be doing today. Hmm, ladders, ropes, tennis balls? Stay tuned. Okay, we got the ropes laying out, connected to the to the clips at the end of the uh, the hoops. We unpacked the plastic. Aside from a nice colony of ants living in it, um, we were able to get it up on this kind of jig we use to basically let the thing spool out as we pull the plastic and walk it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this plastic and walk it all the way down to the end. Uh, and then push it in as close as we can to the actual hoop house itself. Then when we start to unfold it, this is 24 foot wide plastic and the hoops are a little less uh, than 24. They're like 23.9 or something like that. So this will give a little bit of um, you know, right to the ground. So let's just get it un undone and uh, hopefully I don't have too many ants crawling on me by the time I get finished with this. We've had really bad ant problems this year. I don't know why, it's just been the year of the ant. Because it's gonna turn really rough. There it is, all pulled out. Uh, it's still in uh, good shape even for being out here for a while. Yep. Just a few million ants along the way. <laughs> grabbing my ropes. So yeah, this thing of two shovels with handles works really well, but it still takes somebody to steady it. Well, especially when the core was all messed up. So it's it's out and looking good. Right. So the next step is uh, we got to pull a little extra off. So we go past this and then cut it off. Okay, we've laid the plastic now down out over the ropes, and uh, we unhooked it from the spool and we pulled it. We want to leave at least two feet on each end. I know it seems a little wasteful, but the whole thing is, is sometimes this isn't an exact science and sometimes the measurements are a little off. So that leaves us a lot of fudge room. So we put a couple feet, pulled it past uh, the back hoop by two or three feet and we're gonna be a couple feet here. And uh, we'll cut this off. And then the next thing is you're gonna say, what are you doing with those tennis balls? Let's check that out next. This is a uh, six mil UV greenhouse grade plastic. And one of the things about these is the outside of the plastic usually has more UV inhibitors than the inside. So the surface on the inside is a little bit different composition. So you have to make certain that when you're putting this material on that uh, the inside is facing the inside. And they usually mark it, like in this case, the inside has got a mark where it says, this is inside. So that's the inside where the mark is. Okay, so the way it's facing is what we're going to want to do is as we unfold from this side ultimately this side's going to be facing inside so they've already got it kind of figured out they folded it right 
So all you have to do is take this inside piece right here and start pulling it over. And then once it's over, it'll be correctly facing. So it's important that if you do unwind it, and let's just say for argument's sake, you, you, you unwound upside down. Um, from what we did is if you, if you go back and look at, you know, you can go back and look a little bit. We'll put a still in there. But what we did is Ew. we unwound from the bottom. Underneath, underneath instead of over the top. left the inside facing the right way when we pull this over. If you wound from top over like people like to do with their toilet paper, <laughs> you're going to end up... Which with, is the correct way. <laughs> you're going to end up with the wrong side facing... Um, so do it outside. the w wrong way like toilet paper. The wrong toilet paper way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Unwind from the bottom from and the bottom. not the top. Very important tip. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these guide ropes and we're gonna pull this plastic. We're gonna kind of move it over and get it as close to the hoop house as we can. And then we're gonna take some of these guide uh, ropes and we're going to loosely attach them to the other side of the hoop. And the and whole idea here is if there is any wind today, it's supposed to come from towards us and not away from us. But there is none. But there is none right now. And I think we're gonna be good for a couple hours. So we'll be able to get this on. So I should stop talking and get to it. Okay, hey, bear with us while we try and pull plastic and hope this works. It's a two-person job. Actually, it's more, but it's just the two of us, so. Yeah, here Where do you want me? Spot. Down there? Down here. Got it. Things are going a little more difficult than we thought. However, it's still moving ahead. We just got the plastics kind of all wound up. We got to undo it on this side.
We pulled the plastic over. I don't know if it was a good shot or not, but at least we got it over. The tennis balls helped because it was something to hang on to for a while. But we needed a third person to unfold it, or as I call it, a poofing person. It worked out. So here's the tie downs that we put over the top. To hold the plastic in place and as you can see that's what it's doing all of these rest of these ties will eventually be over the top but these were ones every what five or seven eight feet apart ten feet to keep things in place while we were pulling the plastic and so it's up holding them up against the uh, the ribs so nothing takes off So now we're going to tie some of those ties we threw over down because the wind has picked up a little bit and we don't want all that pulling to take off like it's trying to do here in the front. So oh, we got the plastic over the top and what we did is we pulled it as equally as we can about two feet out. This is our first end, we're kind of semi-tacking it down. So we're gonna put some, we put some wiggle wires on both ends, kind of mid-span, and then a little bit at the top. Um, I don't want to make it permanent yet until I realign the entire sides and until the wind is now picking up. So we got issues. Crap. Since the sun has come out, the wind is picking up. That's kind of typical. And so it's moving and poofing on us. And so we had to throw a few more tie overs just to keep it in place till we adjust how far it is on each end and get it centered on top so that we can then start tying them down and putting the ends, the wiggle wire and the channels on the ends. So we just don't want it to take off on us right now. So we're going to tie it down a little further.
Wiggle wire is uh, wiggle. spring steel. It's kind of, it's almost stainless. But I don't think it's quite stainless steel, but it doesn't rust. And uh, it's got a real high tensile strength. So it springs back into the shape it wants to be in. Thank goodness for Leatherman, right? And uh, it comes in six foot lengths and the channels come in 12 foot lengths. It's all aluminum, the channels are all aluminum. And we screw those directly into the, the hoop itself using self-tapping screws. And uh, let's see here. Uh, can you step please? That's gonna be long enough. Nope, I'm gonna have to cut a special one. Again. Come on, cowgirl, throw them over. Yeah. Still got a couple more to go. Ooh, there you go. Yippee, I am okay. This last one. Woohoo. All right, then all we got to do is level out the ends, tie down the ropes, and this job, well, is partially done. Ta -da. Yay! Not too bad throwing. I think they're all over on the other side. I guess it's maybe that softball uh, in my youth that helps me throw. So now we just have to pull them down and cinch them around the ribs. So that's the next thing. Okay, we've got the plastic on. We attach the wiggle wire on the end channel. The next step is, is we're going to now bring these ends up to true. I have to loosen the uh, purlin bolt so it will slide easily. And then we'll use the ratchets and we'll pull until it measures even. Denise will be manning the level so she can tell me when to stop cranking on it. And uh, we do that with both ends. And then the last, the very last step is the ropes that she threw over will tie down. And then basically the skin is on the, uh, the hoop house. Anything else at this point is then the cosmetic uh, finishing off the ends, putting on a lower side shield. Doors. And, well, that's the doors finishing off the ends, yeah. And uh, we're, we're gonna be good to go. It's already real warm in there. Oy. But that's because we have that black fabric cloth in there. And so everything's black, so it really heats up good. Do so you think that's going to be a problem for our spring bulbs? No, that means they'll be ready in... <laughs> Early! <laughs> it's October now, so, you know, we still have a lot of warmth and a lot of the sun's still pretty high in the sky, but it'll be good for winter time. Yeah, maybe we won't have to be throwing frost blankets around all the time. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but okay. we'll have to probably keep the sides up just to keep it cool. Yeah, at times. So, so I gotta loosen this purling bolt here. And... Then we're gonna cant it out yeah. to, level. to level. Out to level. Okay, the T post that you might have saw in the front was just used to it was used to brace the end in at the canted level. So we took that out, we loosened the purlin. Now we're just going to uh, use our ratchet against the ground anchors and bring it up square. Denise is in charge of the square. Okay, we're tying these off. I'm not sure what the right name of this is. I call it a half hitch, but basically it's the it's form of a uh, slip knot. Get that out of the way. And basically what I'm doing is looping around, creating a loop. Let's see if I can do this correctly here. I got no tension on it. There we go. I'm looping through. Taking the loop, slamming it down till it bites on itself. That way, if I need to undo it, I just pull these guys real fast. Otherwise, they pretty much hang in there. Sometimes you got to go through maybe once a month during the winter time and just kind of check them. But after a while, they bite in real good and they don't they don't move at all. But what did you find on the last soup house that was undoing them? 
fox. <laughs> they were playing tug of war with the yeah, uh, taking the ends and going, "Hey, this is really fun." And they they were undoing my loops. Okay, this kind of wraps up the, the major skinning part of it. We got some finish work to do just to kind of tuck this uh, loose plastic in against the wiggle wire we got around the trim. Put a tennis ball at the end of the purlin so we don't, you know, poke through the plastic and get wasps growing in there. And uh, do the ends, but that'll be a different story, different day. But the basics of it is two old, older than average people can skin a hundred foot hoop house. It only took us six days to get, no, it took a few hours to get the project done. Um, we got a few ropes to tighten down, but that's about it. So I want to thank you for uh, joining us on our little expedition today. And if you like what you see, be sure to hit the thumbs up. Also check out our other playlists or other videos. We have lots of topics out there and uh, become a subscriber if you like. And always have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, we did it. 100% tied down, in place. The ends have kind of been cut, so we're ready for the outside doors. And we'll put on the side shields, and that is just about it. We just need to do some cleanup work on the inside, and we can start planting. Yippee!